Hi everybody, it's uh, Eugene Licio, and today I'd like to show you how to use the new Q Animation plugin that is in Cloud Compare. And this is just uh, released. Uh, it's still in beta, actually. If you look up in the top left of my screen, this is a beta uh, version of Cloud Compare. But I've tried it, and it works. It works actually quite well. So uh, first off, I want to give credit to uh, a couple of uh, people or individuals. The first is 2G Robotics, and apparently they had uh, input into this uh, plugin. I'm not sure what the extent was, but I just know that uh, it was mentioned uh, by the Cloud Compare author. And of course, the second person is uh, the author author of Cloud Compare himself, which is uh, Daniel uh, Girardot Monto, uh, who uh, really has been supporting the uh, laser scanning community, and uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful program. So I'm, I'm supporting it as much as I can. So uh, back to it. Um, first, I need, of course, a model. So let me do that. Let me pick up a model here. I want to get something that is uh, decimated, that's not too heavy to work with. So I've got something. It's just a car, nothing special. And okay, so this is in here, and what I'm going to do is turn on the colors. So I'm going to switch from scalar to RGB. Okay, great. So we're going to be creating an animation, and um, I'd like to offer some tips uh, on how to create, uh, you know, a nice smooth animation. And this is just based on my experience. Um, I do work in 3D Studio Max and some other programs, and there's just some little. Um, things that I do when I approach an animation that I hope maybe will help you. Um, the first thing is control. Um, I've been using a space mouse now for probably six months and um, I was very resistant to it at first. So I knew about it a while ago and I was like, eh, I don't want to get the space mouse. It's another toy that I got to you know, keep in, plug into the machine. But now that I've been using it, I think it's wonderful. So I'm, I can rotate this thing in any direction. I can flip it around. And uh, it takes some getting used to. Um, but once you start using it, it really is um, ideal for moving and looking at things in different perspectives. And when you're creating viewpoints for your camera path, it's very, very helpful. So control, if you have a space mouse, great. If not, it's not necessary. But I just find it's very helpful. Okay, um, the second thing is that the way that the plugin works is that you need to set up viewpoints. So you basically move into a position, let's say like this, and say, okay, well, I want this to be one camera viewpoint. And then let's say that I know I want to go around the car to the other side, and I want to end up, let's say, somewhere over here. Well, um, I could create just two viewpoints and say, well, I have my start viewpoint and I have my end viewpoint. But the problem is the way that the uh, most of these uh, animation programs work is that they interpolate in between the two um, viewpoints. So in one case, I'm looking at one side of the car or in one direction, and my next viewpoint is drastically different. It's on the complete opposite side of the model, and it's looking in the opposite direction. So I have a, a very drastic change in the camera viewpoints. And so that's something that I always try to avoid. And what will end up happening is if you try to make a, um, a, a uh, animation using this, it'll actually start, you know, flying through the car, and then it's turning to get to the other side, and then it ends up there. So it just, it's not attractive at all, and it, it actually disorients people when you start making very quick uh, camera path movements. So always think about the path that you're going to take, and break that path up into smaller pieces. I find that that, that is really uh, very, very helpful. Uh, the other thing is that if you're going to be making a change, like in direction, uh, a, view, a view change, so let's say I'm looking this way, and all of a sudden I want to look you know, this way, that's very drastic. So even, even though you're not moving a very far distance, if you're rotating the view, break that up into smaller pieces as well. Um, if I do... Uh, if you think about the camera's going to move um, from one viewport to the next viewport, if I pick two uh, viewports uh, or two views that are, you know, one like this and then one that's just a little bit over, the time between the two is going to be the same as my next step. So if all of a sudden my next viewport is all the way down here, the speed of movement is going to change. So for example, I was here, it's going to move slowly to my next viewpoint, and all of a sudden it's going to speed up and try to get all the way back here because it has the same interval of time that it's using. So um, in some other programs, you can adjust this, but in this particular program, um, it's, it, it considers a sort of an even time frame. It breaks up the, the total time into even chunks between each of the viewports. Okay, so let's get going here. Um, first thing is control V is what sets the viewpoint. So I'm going to go control V and you'll see that here it says viewpoint one. I'm going to move, oh, to about here. I'll move this a little bit more centered. Hit control V. 
I'll go back this way, hit control V, go to the back, not much more than that, hit control V, this corner, like that, control V, and let's say we just want to end up on this side, like that. So I've got six uh, viewports or, or views right now. So to initiate the plugin, I just highlight all of these, so shift click to get them all selected, and I'm going to click on this little button here, okay? the animation plugin and it comes up and you see that it snapped back to the first uh, viewport that I have. So I've got my total duration uh, of 10 seconds and so one, two, three, four, five. Um, actually I think I'm missing a viewpoint here. Let me just try this again. Uh, and let me go to viewpoint like this and I've got one, two, three, four, five. So for some reason I don't have my six. Now maybe what is happening is it's just taking my first one as the zero point and then interpolating in between. So I can increase the time on this if I want. So I can go, I can make this 20 seconds. Okay, and you'll see that it, the interval changes here to four seconds. So if I go back to 10 seconds, you know, it goes back to two seconds here. So between each frame, I've got about a couple of seconds. Well, I'm going to slow this down. I like it when it's slow, it's a little bit better. Now, your frame rate. Um, if you have a low frame rate, if you're doing 10 frames per second or 15 frames per second, because you want to save on, uh, maybe this is something you want to put on the internet um, or on a phone or something like that, it's going to look really choppy. Okay, so increasing your frame rate will give you a smoother transition. In fact, 30 is about the, the minimum that I use. 25 is okay. Um, that will work also, but if you were to increase it, for example, 60, um, you get a very smooth sort of transition. Sometimes it's not that noticeable and it's sort of diminishing returns. For most uh, projects, 30 frames per second is going to work fine. So I'm going to change that to 30. Um, your bit rate, you can leave that, you can increase that. I don't mess with that. I usually just leave it the same. Um, well, you know what? Let's change it in this one. Let's say it's 100,000. Okay, really, it'll give us a little bit more... Uh, a little bit more quality, I think. And then for the, uh, I'm going to call this test AVI. I'm just going to uh, uh, put it to my desktop here. So I'm going to hit preview. And what it'll do is it will start to rotate around looking at all the frames. And it's always a good idea to sort of preview it beforehand, make sure you didn't screw up one of the viewports, that it's not going to flip around on you or, or something like that, or, or move really, really quickly. So I'm okay with this. I, I'm not going to let it finish. I'm just going to let it render. So all you have to do is hit the render button here, and uh, it'll start uh, rendering this out as an AVI file. And so what I will do at the moment, though, is I'm going to press pause and let this uh, cook uh, just for a few seconds, and then I'll come back when it's all done. Okay, so we're back, and um, we've been successful here with the animation, so I'm going to hit OK. Uh, what I need to do is uh, pick this up on my desktop, and so I've got it on the side here, my next monitor, so I'm just going to double-click it, and you'll see that I've got uh, an animation moving here. And this is pretty much what it looks like. And you'll see it's fairly smooth. You know, I picked enough um, uh, viewpoints uh, to sort of... Uh, keep a smooth transition between them all. And you can experiment with the quality and, and such like that. You can increase that if you like. Uh, but this is the basic uh, basic workflow for getting the uh, animation to work. And you can see it's really, really simple. And it's in Cloud Compare, which is free. So a great, great tool. Thanks, everyone.